The world of One Piece is a vibrant and colorful place that feels like a dream. At first glance, it seems like a world of pure adventure, filled with laughter, bizarre islands, and strange carefree characters. The Straw Hat crew, the heart of this story, appears to embody that spirit. Silly, laid back, always ready to chase their dreams. But the reality of One Piece is far from that. When you dig deeper, you realize that these characters carry scars that have shaped who they are. Each straw hat has experienced immense pain, loss, and tragedy in their past. And for most of them, the pain they carry is tied to their longing for something that was taken from them. A home, a family, a place where they belong. Take Brooke for example. He spent decades alone on a ghost ship, surrounded by the remains of his comrades, his only friends, rotting away, while he drifted through life as nothing but bones and memories. Frankie, who was abandoned by his own family, later caused the death of the very man who gave him a new one, the man who took him in, Tom. For all their quirks, for all their laughs, these aren't carefree people, they're people marked by tragedy. Even someone like Usopp who hides his pain behind stories and bravado carries the weight of abandonment. His father left him to chase the pirate dream, and not long after, Usopp lost his mother. He grew up alone in Syrup Village, dreaming of adventure, trying to keep the spirits of others alive even as he lost the only family he had. And then there's Nami. Orphaned as a child, she was taken in by Belmere, a mother who loved her deeply. But that peace was short-lived. Belmia was taken right before her eyes, and Nami was forced into slavery under Arlong, enduring years of cruelty, all while pretending to smile and dream of freedom. Chopper's story is marked by rejection, rejected by humans, rejected by reindeer, a monster who belonged nowhere. The only solace he ever found was in the strange eccentric Dr. Hilluluk, who saw something in him, who gave him a reason to live, if only for a little while. But despite all their pain, most of the Straw Hats had someone who gave them hope, even if only for a brief time. Sanji had his mother and later Zef, the man who saved his life. Usopp had Kaya, his close friends and his childhood in Syrup Village. Brooke for many years sailed with his crew, the Rumba Pirates, laughing, singing, living. Nami had her sister, Nojiko, who stood by her, even as they both suffered under Arlong. Even Chopa, who lost so much, found a fleeting family in Hiluluk and Dr. Kureha. But then there's Nico Robin. And Robin's story is something else entirely. Hers is a tragedy unlike any other in the Straw Hat crew. From the very beginning, she had no one, no home, no safe place to retreat to. Robin's earliest memories are filled with isolation. As a child, she was treated like a monster by the people of her own island. The other children shunned her because of her strange powers. The Hananomi made her different, made her an outcast. But it wasn't just the children. The adults too feared her. They whispered behind her back, called her a demon, made her believe that she was cursed. Even in Ohara, a place filled with scholars and intellect, she was never really accepted. The one person who could have given Robin comfort was her mother. Nicole Olivia. She was never there though. She was always off, pursuing her own dangerous path as a scholar of the Poneglyphs, leaving Robin alone. By the time Olivia returned to Ohara, it was too late for them to be a family. And just as quickly as she re-entered Robin's life, she was taken away again. The only light in Robin's early life came from a single person, Jaguar D. So, a kind, goofy giant who taught her that it was okay to laugh. He was the first person who ever made Robin feel like she wasn't alone in the world, that she wasn't some cursed demon child. But even that bond would be broken. The Buster Court destroyed her entire island, killing everyone she ever knew, the scholars, her mother, and even saw her only friend, who died trying to protect her. Robin lost everything that day, her home, her people, her only friend. From that moment forward, she was truly alone. A child, barely eight years old, left to fend for herself in a world that wanted her dead. 
The world government placed a bounty on her head, branding her as the demon of Ohara, the sole survivor of the greatest archaeological threat to their control. For the next 20 years, Robin lived as a fugitive. She never had a home, never had a moment of peace. Everywhere she went, she was hunted by bounty hunters, by pirates, by the marines. No matter where she turned, she was betrayed, used by people who only saw her as a tool to read the poneglyphs, people who would abandon her, or worse, turn her in to collect the bounty. While the other straw hats had at least some respite, some moments of warmth and love in their lives, Robin had nothing, no family, no friends, just a constant cycle of survival. She learned not to trust anyone, because she knew that no one in the world would ever truly care for her. That was her reality. Until she met the Straw Hat crew. But even then, Robin believed she didn't deserve happiness. For so long she thought of herself as a burden, that her existence brought nothing but destruction and pain. That's why, when she was captured by the world government at Denny's lobby, she didn't fight back. She thought it was her fate to die, to disappear, because the world would be better off without her. But for the first time, Robin learned what it meant to be truly wanted. Luffy and the crew didn't see her as a weapon, as a tool, or as a burden. They saw her as one of them. And in that moment, Robin finally allowed herself to ask for what she had been denied her entire life. I want to live. Robin's story is a tragedy. Yes, that much is true. But it's also a story of survival, of a woman who lost everything but still fought in her own way to keep going. A woman who, for so long, believed she didn't deserve happiness, didn't deserve love, until she found a family that showed her she did. The world of One Piece may be colorful and bright, but it's in these moments of pain and healing that it truly shines. Robin's battle with Black Maria wasn't just a fight between two powerful women, it was a culmination of her journey a defining moment in her growth as a person and as a straw hat. For someone like Robin, who had spent her entire life running, hiding, and trying to stay invisible, this battle represented something far deeper than just strength. It was about protecting the family she had finally allowed herself to love. For decades, Robin's survival depended on staying in the shadows. Whenever conflict arose, she would retreat, using her intelligence to escape rather than facing it head on. She couldn't afford to stay and fight. Doing so would mean revealing herself, making herself a target, and in her mind, risking the people around her. Even after joining the Straw Hats, Robin struggled with this instinct. She was a master at strategy, espionage, and subterfuge. But direct confrontation? That was never her way. But Black Maria wasn't just any opponent. She wasn't simply a physical threat. She embodied everything that had haunted Robin for her entire life. Black Maria used more than just force. She wielded words as her weapons, cutting into Robin's deepest insecurities. She mocked Robin's reliance on others, sneering at her need for protection from her friends, implying that without them, Robin was still that scared little girl running from her past. But the Robin that stood before Black Maria was not the same Robin who had spent years running. This Robin had something to protect. Her past taught her that she had to fend for herself because no one else would. But the straw hats taught her that she didn't have to fight alone. And that shift in her heart, that realization, it was crucial. For Robin, the straw hats weren't just a crew. They were the first people in her life who fought for her. They risked everything to save her in any's lobby. They didn't care about the cost, the danger. They just wanted her to be free. In that kind of loyalty, that kind of love, it changed her. For the first time, Robin had people she wanted to fight for, people she wanted to protect. So when Black Maria tried to tear Robin down, she didn't just awaken the power of the Hanahana Nomi, she awakened something far stronger, her resolve. Black Maria's cruelty only reinforced what Robin had already come to understand. She was no longer alone. She had something worth fighting for, something worth protecting. She wasn't just surviving anymore. She was living for the sake of her crew, her family. In becoming the demon, Robin wasn't succumbing to the world's perception of her. She was reclaiming it. She was saying, 
Yes, I am a demon, but I am a demon who fights for her family. She didn't fear that identity anymore, because the straw had shown her that it didn't define her. What defined her was her loyalty, her intellect, and now, her strength. She could be all those things, scholar, friend, protector, without being consumed by the darkness of her past.